Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. November 24th, Paul Carlson. When the Christian Medical and Dental Society sent out an urgent call for doctors to go to the Congo, Paul Carlson went for a six month assignment. But even when he was back home, the people of the Congo and their huge need for doctors stayed with him. So, in 1963, Carlson took a 75% pay cut, left cushy Redondo Beach, California, and moved his family to the Congo, to a clearing in the jungle with a yard full of crocodiles, which locals called the end of the world. It was half a mile from fresh water. Carlson worked in a leper colony and an 80-bed hospital which served 100,000 people. He spent almost all his time trying to heal, which included fixing the plumbing, working on cars, and even seeing patients in nearby villages. At that time, the Congo was in political turmoil, and Carlson experienced that turmoil firsthand. A group of rebels arrested Carlson, accused him of being an American spy, and sentenced him to death. They sent him 300 miles away from his family and tortured him physically and mentally. Simba rebels used Carlson as a bargaining chip to get what they wanted from the Belgian and American governments. When the rebels got their concessions, they reneged and kept Carlson alive to use him another day. On this date, in 1964, American and Belgian governments announced the end of this bargaining, and they launched a rescue mission to save Carlson. The U.S. sent airplanes and Belgian paratroopers dropped on the outskirts of town, where Carlson was housed with other hostages. That's where today's story starts. Courage is looking death in the face and trusting that God is God. It was an early Tuesday morning when airplanes thundered over Stanleyville, a town perched along the Congo River surrounded by jungle and magnificent waterfalls. It was a beautiful and busy place, and it was located directly in the middle of the African continent. In the center of the city sat a quaint Victorian hotel, and outside, on this day, the hotel was surrounded by angry mobs and guards with heavy weapons. Inside the walls of the hotel, three men huddled together and cried out for God to move amid the chaos and turmoil. The Congolese government and the rebels were in an uproar. The Congo had just gained independence from Belgium, and with no stable government in place, rebel groups took over. They were holding all white people hostage. The air was thick with hostility. Among the hostages was a medical missionary named Paul Carlson. In the middle of the chaos and noise, Paul grabbed his friends and placed their lives in God's hands. Paul knew nothing else could be done at this point. He had known that this moment would come. The past few months, life had been a whirlwind for Paul. He had been captured by the rebel army at his home, which was in the jungle of the Republic of Congo. That house was where he served as a doctor to many of the locals, providing a skill they needed. He loved them with everything in him. Now, at 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning, the U.S. Air Force thundered overhead and woke Paul. He said, in days like this, we certainly have to leave the future in God's hands. Only two options remained. They would be rescued, or the rebels would use them as human shields against their opponents. The hotel that housed the captives was heavily guarded, and that made escape impossible. For a moment, everything was still but then the guards rushed in and herded the captives out onto the street. Bullets were flying, and the rebels were shooting every which way. It was total chaos. In the gunfire, captives were hit with stray bullets, so many started running for protection, as did Paul and his friend Chuck. When they were running from the gunfire, they found a wall with a narrow space to fit through, but only one person could fit at a time. Paul ran to his friend Chuck and said, "Go." Chuck leaped over the wall, turned around to grab Paul, but it was too late. Bullets hit Paul's body, and he fell to the ground. One of Paul's friends saw his Bible and removed it from his pocket. 
these short but powerful words were underlined. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In God's word in Daniel 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Today, ask yourself this question. If you found yourself in a similar situation between life or death, like Paul Carlson did, where would you draw your strength from? Courage is looking death in the face and trusting that God is God. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. We are excited to announce that every 365 story is now available as an ebook and is available for purchase on our website at 365christianmen.com.